Welcome friends in this episode of Let's Talk DevOps we'll try to learn more about chaos engineering and to know more about it we have Gurpreet with us today as our expert who will talk us through building resilient systems and implementing chaos engineering practices before we begin let's get a brief overview of chaos engineering and its significance in building reliable systems hey Gurpreet thank you for joining in let me start off with the basics. Can you explain to us about chaos engineering in simple terms and maybe also how it benefits organizations? Sure. So chaos engineering is a proactive practice where we intentionally introduce controlled failures into a system to test its resilience. Now, by stimulating real world failures in a safe environment, what we do is we ensure that we identify the weaknesses and improve the system's ability to handle unexpected issues. This, as a result, leads to more reliable systems, reduced downtime and improved customer experiences. Sounds great. Uh, but Gurpreet, is it possible to conduct chaos engineering experiments without causing unnecessary downtime or disruptions? Excellent question. So safety is paramount in chaos engineering. To avoid any unnecessary downtime, we always start with the small scale experiments and use automated tools to carefully orchestrate the controlled failures. We gradually increase the complexity of tests as we gain more confidence in the system's resilience. And the goal here is to learn from failures without causing any major disruptions. True. And is chaos engineering uh, suitable for all types of systems, including the smaller applications? Absolutely. It's valuable for systems of all sizes. Even small applications can experience failures and testing their resilience can help us to uncover these potential issues that might not actually uh, be evident in traditional testing. The principles of chaos engineering apply to any system with the goal of improving its reliability. Yeah, yeah, totally makes sense. So uh, does chaos engineering replace uh, traditional testing methods? Uh, can we say that? I'm, I'm actually really glad you asked that question. So, so chaos engineering doesn't replace traditional testing. It actually complements it, right? So traditional testing focuses on validating the expected behaviors, but chaos engineering is actually helping us to uncover the unexpected vulnerabilities and edge cases that we might have. Now, both approaches are essential for building these robust systems. Yeah. And so which testing approach is followed in chaos engineering? We have we have three different kinds of experiments, I would say. So the first is automated faults. The second is fault injection testing. And the third is dependency testing. Now, just to give you a deep dive, let's let's say fault injection testing, for example, this comprises of deliberate errors and faults being injected into the system so that we can identify the vulnerabilities before the failure actually takes place. And what this does is it improves the system's res resilience in addition to increasing its ability to ensure unstable conditions in a production environment. OK. Uh, and so how do you ensure that chaos engineering experiments are designed effectively? I think the thing with this is it, you always have to ensure that you have a well-defined hypothesis about the system's weaknesses. So we identify the critical components, the potential failure scenarios and, and what the expected outcomes are. And with this hypothesis, we, we can then design controlled failures that validate our assumptions and provide us with further insights. Absolutely. So. Uh, so what are some um, common misconceptions that one can have about chaos engineering uh, that you might have come across? I think the biggest uh, misconception is that a lot of people assume that it's about causing chaos randomly. And this is definitely not the case. It's, it's actually controlled testing. 
Uh, others fear it will lead to unnecessary downtime. But what we're trying to do here is to take the precautions to minimise that risk. Uh, it's not just for large scale systems, it's beneficial for systems of all sizes, because at any point we could have a failure. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. Yeah, true. So, so how often should uh, organisations conduct these experiments? I would say this needs to be an ongoing process in any organisation. As systems evolve, new failure modes can emerge. So regular testing ensures that we can make sure the system is resilient over time. Uh, the frequency can vary based on the complexity of the system and how often it undergoes the changes. But I think the biggest takeaway here is that it should be an ongoing process. Awesome. Yep. Thank you so much, Gurpreet, for answering these questions and shedding light on chaos engineering. Uh, and of course, it's a continuous journey to build reliable systems and uh, chaos engineering definitely plays a vital role in that process. Uh, so friends, if you have any further questions or need assistance, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, but that's a wrap for now. Take care and until next time, keep talking DevOps. <laughs>